Hello and welcome to the webinar series of Data Migration Demystified. My name is Michael Buchholz. I'm from ProStep AG in Germany, located in Darmstadt to be more precise. And I'm the product owner of OpenPDM Migrate, a migration platform for, well, not only for PLM, but, all, but also ERP and other kind of systems. Today, I wanna to give you the first out of four sessions, webinar sessions, and the first one is called data migration strategy. But maybe we start with having a look at how these sessions come together. Quick overview about the webinar series data migration demystified. So as said before, we have four sessions. The first session is about data migration strategies. So how to, which one are actually available and how to pick one. What are the main driving factors? The second one is about navigating the technical maze. There I'm going to speak about some export, data trends, uh, data mapping, data imports, um, things that are important for migration projects. Then the third session is about ensuring confidence, so making sure that the people are confident that this migration will really work out as expected. And the fourth session is the migration journey where I wanna give you some examples about migration projects that we did before and some best practices um, about how to execute a migration project. So whenever a customer asks us to have, to have a look at the migration project, what we do first is a migration discovery workshop. So this workshop's aim is to really having a look what the actual project scope will be. What's the strategy, what's the timeline, um, what infrastructure is required, which other resources are needed and so on to set correct customer expectations for such a migration project. Because many customers come to us with expectations like migration will take only two months or something like this, which is hard to cover when you're talking about a PLM system with a vast amount of historic data and, and, and so on. So based on that, we are then defining the actual migration plan. That slide summarizes the content that we usually go through at Discovery Workshop. So we're starting with a strategy, then looking into the systems and the data models that need to be migrated, looking into ways how to map the data models on a brief level. We need to think and talk about business domains that are um, impacted by the migration so that we can make sure that the business domains are aware of the migration and that they are really involved in the migration. In the end, we are not migrating data. We are enabling users in the new system, so they need to be part of the project. We are looking into risks and pitfalls um, and looking into mitigation strategies of those. And if it's um, inside the migration project, if it's a requirement, then also CAD translation. So going the switching between different CAD formats. So in today's session, we wanna focus on the migration strategy. So I brought four data migration strategies that can be applied to a migration project. The first one is Big Bang migration. Obviously, most of the people think that Big Bang migration means moving all the data into the new system at one go, but that doesn't really mean it. It means that you're enabling all users at one milestone in the new system. That means moving the data can either be one large migration or a front load migration and a delta migration and maybe a second delta migration, depending on how long these delta migrations take. So it's about enabling all users at one milestone, not migrating all data at once. The good thing is you have a single cutover event. So you can focus all of your resources onto that one event, which will happen at one point in time. This also means that you have a reduced complexity over time because you can focus everything on, one, on, on that one event. On the con side, you do have a quite high risk because if that one event fails, you have quite a large rollback of your user base into the old system. Also, moving all the data with Big Bang migrations might mean that you have long downtimes for the business, which can mean business disruption. And last but not least, you have an intensive preparation for that. So you really want to make sure that this one single cutover event works out. So you need to do multiple test migrations and testing them thoroughly together with the business. On the incremental migration, there you're picking or you're slicing the data base that you want to migrate into chunks either separated by business domain, project, program, or other 
um, topics that can be picked. This is something that we are discussing then with the QC customer together in the discovery workshop. And these smaller batches will be migrated then uh, one after the other when the users are ready to go for the new system. That means obviously smaller batches, reduced risk, and you have a minimal disruption on business side because the runtime is lower. Usually you can size the batches to really fit into one weekend, for example. But on the other side, this means you have increased complexity when handling the actual migrated data because data can be owned by the source system versus data owned by the target system. And you really need to pinpoint out for uh, the user where certain data is currently owned in the source system or the target system. So this is meant by double data management. And in the end, you also have an extended migration process duration. So compared to Big Bang, where you simply have one cutover event and then everything is migrated at incremental migrations, you have a longer time span until every piece of data is migrated into the new system. Well, then the search migration strategy that you can apply to a migration project is coexistence. The coexistence is usually applied when you're introducing a completely new PLM environment and you're introducing it capability by capability. So for example, you first want to use a new PLM system for document management and then you will enable MCAT. And afterwards, you want to go for eBOM, for MBOM, and so on and so on. So you go live with your new system without the whole capability set in place. You just get one capability after the next. And while going live, you want to use that or leverage that new capability already in the new system. So that means that for certain maturities of your data or for the, for the availability of the capabilities in the target system, you need to pick the corresponding data and move it over or copy it over to the new system. And then if you, when you're done in the new system with that capability, you probably also want to sync it back into the old system. So both systems coexist, the old system and the new system. And this kind of migration strategy has of course a low risk because you can always go back and forth and you could also use the new capability in the old system still if something is not working. So risk of failing the whole thing is not very high. And you also have a gradual transition. So also on the education of your user base, you can introduce one capability after the next. You do not need to train everything in one go. So that can also be quite on the positive side. Also, you're flexible, sorry. So if there's something going on with the capabilities, you always can go back and forth. The problematic side for coexistence is, of course, it's very complex. You really need to get every integration, every migration on point and need to make sure that each of the data that you're moving has the master um, so that you really know where is the master currently of that data. Of course, for all these integrations on a long time on, on, a, on the long time span, there is high costs involved with it. So we had coexistent migration projects that uh, ran for over five years or more. So that's quite a costly thing to do. Um, there can also be some user confusion regarding training and, 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 and so on. So you need to make crystal clear where the users can actually execute which kind of capability, which it's not so easy for, for the user base to follow on that because there are usually many changes while then also adding new capabilities on top of it. Usually then you're changing some of the capabilities that you already had. So last but not least, we have manual migration. This is used when you have a very limited date, a set of data that needs to be migrated, or you have data which simply cannot be handled in batch. This is sometimes the case if you have very specific combinations of CAT systems, you still could then do a data of CAT systems with the corresponding PLM system. Um, you still could do uh, something like a zipped approach to zip the data in and move them over as batch. But if that's nothing that you want to do, there is sometimes only one possibility executing it, and that's an, with manual migration. Of course, you have re reduced risk with that because you're doing it manually. You're having a gradual transition, of course. 
Uh, also, you have business continuity because the business can pick and go, uh, pick and um, move the data as they, as they need it in the new system. But on the problematic side, you do have usually a lot of data quality issues because when people migrate the data, they are sometimes migrating the data differently and make other decisions. So data quality is a topic. You also have the, prob the problem of high costs. Of course, you need to move the data manually, which involves manual labor. So this is a high cost topic. And of course, this is not applicable for larger volumes. If you're going for millions of objects and you want to do that uh, manually, this is simply not working out. So now that we have heard about different data migration strategies, let's have a look into decision factors. So how to decide for a specific migration strategy. The first things that you really want to understand is the scope of the migration. So what are the systems that need to be migrated? Which data types uh, need to be migrated? What's the quantity? How do you want to export the data? Uh, how do you want to import the data? And really understand what's the um, what's the overall time for doing a migration with these um, known numbers in, in mind? Because that drives the decision whether it could even be a Big Bang migration. If it simply takes too long, you need to go into an incremental migration. So very important topic. The next one is operational and training, where we need to look into the user base size and where the users are located. Because for a Big Bang migration, all users need to be trained for a single point in time, which can be very challenging if you have a large user base or a very separated user base internationally. So you want to understand whether it's possible. If it's not possible, you probably need to go already into coexistence or incremental migration. On business factors, we, we need to talk to the business what's their maximum amount of time that they do not have access to the system. Right? So you really want to that your business understands what are the risks when you're going into a Big Bang migration, into an incremental migration and so on, so that the business can also decide and understand what are the what they can expect when, when we are going one way or another. Also, data cleansing is a topic that uh, needs to be incorporated into the actual migration project. Um, to make sure that all data is cleansed before migrating. And if you have a lot of data cleansing to do, you already might want to look into incremental migration because cleaning up a whole database manually might take a very long time. And then you want to have migrations, a staggered migration approach like incremental migrations to migrate already the data that was cleansed. Last but not least, we have cost considerations. So the Big Bang migration is usually the most cost effective due to timeline, resource needs, and of course, manual labor that is involved with it. But um, sometimes you have to pick the other ones and you really want to understand what's the difference between the Big Bang and incremental and the coexistence implementation. So if you decide that we, ProStep, can assist you in your migration journey, then what we can bring with us in the migration project is, of course, OpenPD Migrate. OpenPD Migrate, as a migration platform, supports all of the previously discussed data migration strategies, whether it be the Big Bang migration, the incremental migration, or any long-term coexistence migration. So if you're interested in that, just get in touch with us. Looking forward to it. So thank you very much for listening to Data Migration Strategies from the webinar Data Migration Demystified, first session. Um, the next time we will be talking about navigating the technical maze uh, regarding exports, imports, mapping, and so on. So if you can join, feel free. I'm looking forward to it.